Are you guys ready for a good chapter? Cause today, we're going to a soul bridge. Da 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 da. I think my favorite introductions are all the ones in which Marth takes like four steps to the next location. Those are all real good. I mean, one would hope, otherwise, uh, otherwise this game's kinda over now. Also, hell yeah! You've waited for years, but finally, we get to see Iris's new hat, and it's also cute as hell. Uh, I believe the male avatar just straight up gets Wendell's hat, which is pretty great in its own right, but that's a good hairstyle? That being said, though, Marth, I haven't forgotten what you said when Iris had her head shaved, so I'm disregarding all your compliments from now on. Anyway, has, how is everyone? Gotta ask that question every time. It's my thing by this point. Well, not much with magic and speed, my dude. No, 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 no. Alright, well, even if I did get the uh, chance of getting that conversation, I wouldn't take it, because I hate Mathis. I don't even know what his conversation is. <sighs> Maybe I should check it later just so I know. I don't particularly want to, but ugh. How dare you insinuate that I've never eaten a strawberry? These strawberries are fucking suck and I hate them. Don't offer me garbage. And I mean, the palace uses all of those pesticides, so I don't know. Look, Arcania is really into GMOs. Well, what do you know? It turns out pesticides do affect your food, shit. Alright, and that's where we end off with that one. Iris and Linda are gonna go on a nice strawberry date later. Oh, great, now I get to continue this one. Well, the first conversation was the worst one, but the rest of this isn't any better. They're all bad, and I hate these conversations. I feel like the game is punishing me for using two Cavaliers. It's always below the text box. It's really hard to see down there. Whoa, 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 what? You mean... The man is good at the thing that's typically seen as a f feminine activity, and the woman isn't? Oh my, oh wow, Fire Emblem, you're blowing my mind here, holy shit. Oh wow, I'd never considered that before. Whoa. You've shaken my entire worldview, Fire Emblem. I, I can't believe this. I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> so fucking milk toast. Whoa my god! Traditional gender roles might not always apply to people? My god! Fire Emblem, you're on the cutting edge of society. Got some hot takes there. Never would have seen that coming. Those fools. A 
Also, the suffering of children gives me life. Why do you think I'm still alive to this day? I'm 148 years old. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Injure the children. The pain itself isn't enough. They must live for the scars. If you like stories involving children stubbing their toes or scraping their knees and me not doing shit about it, well, I can tell you about those anytime. Well, I mean, it could be worse. They could be coming by sea as well. Alright, well, things don't look too good, but uh, what if we look at the map? Over here we've got a village. Down south, of course, as you can see, we're uh, slightly zoomed in from the last chapter, but that area is more or less the same as it was in the previous chapter. Astrum and the heroes and all, and oh look, it's Roger. Remember Roger? He sure was a knight. And guarding the fortress is George, with the Sagittarius Star Sphere Shard. So, George stands in her way now. <laughs> Got anything to say about that, Marth? I mean, I saw that myself. Do you disbelieve our scouts, Marth? I can't believe you don't trust... Um... Frank, our very good spy. Alright, so, now we can recruit George. Oh yeah, and of course we also have to talk about Roger, because... Uh, I mean, he's got a face, so you'd figure you'd need to recruit him, but, you know, just in case you didn't know how, the game will tell you. I mean, in fairness, you might not remember Roger. He certainly was there in Shadow Dragon. And yeah, we're gonna have to recruit Roger with Seda again. And just like last time, I'm not gonna bother using him. But that's a story for another time. Hey, Kane! Good to see you. It's also good that you already joined us. I don't need to give you a bio at the moment. I already did it. Yeah, last time you escaped from some sort of army, you were half dead and bleeding a lot. Glad that didn't happen a second time. Oh, Harden's here, huh? Okay, so not only are we being pincered, we've also got to deal with Harden. Which, um, you know, considering he's a pretty good fighter in the first place and now apparently he wants us dead, I don't think that's going to be a good thing. Alright, so Chapter 8 is a pretty fun one, though that being said, I have to admit it is a lot less tense after the first time I played it, and I'll explain why later. We've got some good items here, including an Armor Slayer and a Hammer. The Silver Weapons are pretty good, and you might have some characters who can use those. Well, actually you definitely do, unless somebody like Paul has died. Some people start with a good enough rank for those, but regardless. So, uh, first things first, uh, there is a thief to the south we're going to want to kill. Now, I'm gonna place Kane here basically so I have a bit of a defense, but we also want to go after this guy with Leo. Now is not a good time to photocopy your butt and staple it to your boss's face. Oh no. Eat a bucket of tuna flavored pudding, then wash it down with a gallon of strawberry quick. Just like last time, if you're playing on Lunatic, if you actually approach Astrum and the boys, they will try to attack you, so uh, do be wary. Uh, make sure to kill that thief as soon as possible so you don't enter their range. 
And uh, at this point, you're basically going to want to maintain a bit of a choke point. It's really not that difficult to do so on either end, because the bridge is only two tiles wide. But you're also going to need some strong units, because we've got paladins. And of course, you're also not going to want somebody with a hammer, because you don't want to kill Roger. I mean, again, I'm not going to be using him, but like, I don't want to kill him. He's just some schmuck. Of course, you're also going to want to send Marth to the village, and, um, uh... That's Harden, huh? Okay, so, let me just get this straight. Nobody's seen Harden in, like, a year, right? Because if somebody had, um... Quick question, uh... How did nobody notice Harden is evil now? Like, legitimate question. We all just marched out, and nobody noticed the fact that Harden now looks like a literal demon? Alright, so we've got generals over here, and we've also got Harden, who has the Gradivus and the Dark Spear. One makes him invincible, the other's just a really good throwing weapon. Harden's also got extremely good stats, so even if you could touch him, you would probably die. So, yeah, uh, I'd like to point out that all three regalia are in play right now. We've got George with Parthia, we've got Astrum with Mercurius, and now we have the Gradivus. And I'm sorry for speaking over you, Bantu. This is actually kind of important information, because if you'd been wondering where Tiki had gone off to, you know, being a big important dragon child and all, apparently she's far, far to the north, in a place that no humans have actually been to save one. Who is, of course, Anri, Marth's ancestor. You know, the great hero who killed the Shadow Dragon Medius before. Yeah, that guy. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of the first bit of backstory we're getting. Uh, this game goes into a lot of backstory about Arcania. Uh, save that thought. It's Bantu, and even though he's a monoket, he's still also an old man, which means he's terrible. Bantu's base stats are all really bad, his growth rates are bad, and all he has as a crutch is the Firestone. Dragonstones do increase your stats, but it's really not going to help that much. Bantu is okay now, and he's really not going to get any better. And of course, if you remember the Divine Stone from Shadow Dragon, he can't wield that, so he doesn't really have an advantage at all. Pretty much only going to use him if you want a dragon now. And even then, it's really not worth using him. Okay, Bantu's been talked about. Uh, unless you've killed the Fire Dragon from the previous chapter, he will have absolutely no weapon until you kill that thief with the Firestone in this chapter. And if you manage to miss that, well, you're not using Bantu. He can't use any other weapons. Uh, anyway, though, yeah, this game goes into Arcania's backstory a lot more. It kind of started with the previous chapter. You know, you had Jagan talking about the Thane of Raman and... You know, the whole backstory about uh, the big warrior coming down from the sky and saving everybody. But we'll get to that later. That only slightly counts as backstory for, um, reasons. And that's not the best level up, but at the same time, 15 strength is really damn good. That's better than some of our melee characters. Like, seriously. Uh, let's see Ogma. What's Ogma doing? Come on, I want to see his strength. I want to see what that strength is. What is that strength, though? As the kids would most certainly say, I'm sure. Okay, I think it said eight as it passed by. So yeah, um... Ryan may not always be the luckiest with his speed, but, um... 15 strength is extremely good. Guys, Ryan's very good. I feel he's becoming unstoppable. Also, thank goodness, Linde is a mage, and even enemies don't have that much in terms of resistance. Because, like, she hasn't really gotten many strength growths, has she? 
It's mostly just the skill speed luck ones over and over again. Anyway, though, uh, as I said before, this chapter actually did get pretty tense for me the first time around. And that's due to the fact that for some reason, I didn't realize that I had the rescue staff. I mentioned before when we got the rescue staff that it is extremely good and very helpful for a lot of situations that will arise in this game. Uh, and this is definitely one of them. I am, however, going to play this kind of like I did on my first go, in that I'm not going to rescue Marth. I would much rather he go to the end himself, you know, on his own two feet, because I think the chapter's more interesting like that, because uh, Harden's over there preparing, and we've also heard that the unit to the south is preparing to charge. Of course, we've got more mercenaries, but the heroes are what we have to worry about. We do have a time limit, We'll see what that is later. Uh, I guess I should talk about Roger. He sure is here. Oh boy, he is a knight, and... In fairness, Iris didn't really do anything to him, and he was fairly strong, but... I'm not using him. And what the hell's with you here, my dude? Yeah, Arcani is gonna rule over everyone, so... I don't know. I'd prefer to just have a payroll, you know? You're fighting for what you believe in, which is, of course, survival, and not really anything right or good. You're kind of just being a coward, but, you know, at least you're, you're a confident coward, I'll give you that. Goodbye forever! See, Roger, when you say things like that, I start getting a bit iffy on ya. We don't have women like you back in Gruster Graw, and nobody just flies up to me and says that my stupid mistakes aren't a problem. Oh yeah, let's talk about them. Roger, of course, is a pretty great tank. With some high HP and defense, he can soak quite a few hits. He's also got quite a bit of luck. Well a lot growth rate, so eventually he shouldn't be crit too much either. However, you should also note his relatively high strength. He's got a good starting strength and his growth rate is 60%, so he can also do some damage as well as take it. If you want to use a knight, Roger's really not a bad choice. His availability compared to Drog isn't the best, but honestly, I would say Roger stands out enough where that shouldn't be a problem. Alright, he's been talked about, I'm sure. Unless something terrible happened to future me, in which case... How the fuck are you people watching this? Anyway, though, what was I talking about before? Oh yeah, Marth. So, uh, quick... Oh, and, uh, by the way, haven't mentioned, uh, the lunatic extra characters. Uh, there is one extra paladin, but more importantly, there are, I believe, three extra generals? I have the map up, well, kind of up. Yeah, three extra generals, and they are actually within your path. Like, you are actually going to have to fight them. I don't know how their stats differ from the ones that are farther away that you can avoid. I would imagine they're a little weaker since you have to fight them, and I feel like even though one has an arm scroll, they kind of want to discourage you from actually fighting these guys. I mean... You can definitely take on the uh, generals, and I feel they are actually a lot easier than the heroes because, of course, they have weaknesses, and of course, the shop sells their weaknesses. Uh, it sells both armor slayers and uh, hammers, which is real good. Also, goddamn, these snipers have silver bows. Yeah, these are actually some pretty strong units, though. I am surprised that the uh, lunatic mode only adds four. I would have thought it would be more since we're kind of fighting like, I guess not the full Arcanian army, it's just Harden's Detachment, which is good enough to kill you without much effort. Uh, that being said though, one of the other reasons this chapter was so tense when I first played the game is I actually didn't know I could take on the generals, I kind of just assumed that they'd be too strong for me, so I avoided them. Which means that when the enemies actually started charging, there were a lot of units close to me. 
And, uh, yeah, once they start charging, if you haven't killed enough of them, there's a really good chance that you're just going to be surrounded, because you don't want to take on too many of them at, the t at a time. They are, of course, very hardy and can do some damage, and you can pick them off early, and that's pretty good. If you can't pick them off early, you've got a lot more on your plates. So, by the time this chapter was over, I was actually just wedged into the top left corner, and it was really cool. Oh yeah, and of course, here's your warning that Harden's going to be attacking soon. It's turn 5, so we're still safe, but uh, we don't have much time left before, obviously, a demon Harden comes in and kills us. I do kind of miss this chapter being so tense, though, to be completely honest. It was pretty fun. Uh, while I'm not huge on Fate's Conquest, Chapter 10 is one I actually like, even though that's kind of like the infamous one. It's definitely a very... that's a weird level. It's definitely a bit of a... it's a stressful chapter? I don't know, maybe that's overselling it a little bit. Uh, it's a tricky one to deal with, and while I had a bit of an easier time the last time I attempted playing Conquest uh, over the first time in which I barely scraped by, by the skin of my teeth, it still felt like it was really close. It was actually still fairly tense, even though I had a vague idea of what was going to go on throughout the chapter. Uh, the first time, of course, it's just a whole lot of surprises, which is also kind of what makes this chapter so difficult. It's the surprise that really makes things trickier, but yeah, that being said, chapter 10 in that game, actually still kind of tricky. This one especially if I had used the rescue staff, is a lot more simple. To be fair though, maybe on a harder mode it would actually be more tense, just because everything is uh, a lot higher stat-wise and that sort of thing. I don't know though, because I haven't played hard mode myself. I really wish I could bring myself to do so, but honestly, oh my god, what the hell, Linde? Uh, I really wish that I could play hard mode without the enemy reinforcement thing. I kind of feel like Fire Emblem should use that sort of, like, XCOM difficulty thing, in which there are difficulty modes, sure, that's fine, but also there are various other things you can customize within the difficulty. I actually think that's pretty cool. Like, and- ooh, jeez. Harden's, uh, closing in on those preparations. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh... I think XCOM's got a pretty good way of going about it. It's just, you choose what you want in the game. You can have damage roulette if you'd like. You can have permadeath. You know, that sort of, well, uh, permadeath, but it forces you to keep your choices. Uh, no matter what, everybody dies permanently, but if you turn on Iron Man mode, it will actually uh, save if somebody dies, so you can't go back on any huge mistakes. But yeah, that sort of thing I think would be really good for Fire Emblem, and it's already so close, because we have standard difficulty, and then we also have the, uh, whether or not people permadie thing, that's its own separate thing, and also, hi Harden, how's it going? So, uh, Harden's got a battle aura. Again, I have to question why anybody is okay with this? Like... You can't tell me that nobody has noticed actual, literal Demon Harden, who is now talking about how he's the ruler of the world, and how he will crush all who oppose him. I mean, like... He's not said this around anybody! He's doing the JRPG villain thing! You can't tell me that nobody's noticed Harden being evil. Like, come on! Anybody? Alright, so, as you might have gathered, this is the point at which shit hits the fan. All units except Harden will actually charge at you. Apparently, Harden did actually come after you himself in the original game, and I kinda wish he still did that. Just because, like... By this point, you should be wrapping up. If not, you're going to have a lot of units attacking you. You're going to be in a very bad spot. You just really need to finish up now, or you're kind of screwed. And I don't think Harden moving would really make much of a difference in that case. 
other than just showing you that, yes, indeed, you're going to die if you don't finish soon. Meh. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, his luck is already pretty bad, so, you know, a little bit more luck is actually good. So, uh, yeah, uh, I want to kill the general so I can get the arm scroll, but, uh, the rest of them, hmm, they start far enough back where you're not going to kill them off and uh, have a few generals to deal with. No, you're dealing with at least four of them, plus whatever you didn't kill before, which is more than I would have liked. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, in case you didn't notice back there with the uh, dude at the house, he said, Archers will get along with archers. You can also recruit George with Gordon, but I've never done that just because, I mean, like, it's Marth. And I do like this conversation. I think it's interesting. Gordon's might be alright as well. I actually haven't looked it up. But, uh, yeah, I think it also helps the tension here because I do have to waste a turn with Marth. So now I can't complete this chapter by the end of this turn. I have to wait another one. Alright, it's George time. Honestly, despite George's status within the actual story, he's really not that good an archer. He's already promoted, and his base stats are okay, but chances are, if you've been using an archer up to this point, they might have stats higher than he does as a level 5 sniper. And his growth rates aren't really much better. His luck is one of his best non-HP stats, and everything else just kind of floats uncomfortably below 50%. Really, his only advantage is the fact that he has a bow rank of A, and he starts with Parthia, which is a very powerful weapon, but honestly, I think it's better to just save Parthia rather than give it to George, and then have a different archer use it at some point because Parthia's only got so many uses, and it's really best you save it for when you're going to actually need it. All your friends are laughing behind your back. Kill them. Take down all those naked pictures of Ernest Borgnon you've got hanging in your den. Alright, so, uh, now that that's done, uh, me ending this chapter actually did take a while, but, you know, I figured it'd be a lot cooler if we ended this battle by fighting back against the oncoming forces, and, you know, it also helps experience if you want a mechanical reason why I did this. In case you need mechanics for everything, you fool, you utter imbecile. And we got that arm scroll, which is an item I'm probably never going to use, just because it increases the, uh, uh, weapon rank of whatever you currently have equipped, which I don't really use equipment outside of, like, one thing in this game. You know, like, if somebody uses a lance, I just keep them on the fucking lance, even if they can use swords as well. Which is why I always, you know, focus on, like, uh, lance default characters or sword default uh, cavaliers, stuff like that, because, you know, Rhodey could use swords, I just don't think it's a good use of his time to use them. I stay with lances. I mean, come on, he just got a lance rank up. I think that proved my point entirely. Also, dang, nice level. Uh, oh, uh, since I didn't mention it, um, I believe uh, on Lunatic, uh, Harden's forces will actually start moving on turn 6, so uh, you might not want to play as risky as I did in this chapter, because uh, to be fair, I did kind of cut it close. I mean, it was purposeful, but still, uh, if things could actually kill you, you uh, might want to be wary of them. Good life advice, I think. Uh, I would have had George attack somebody at the end here, you know, also for dramatic effects. You know, he's also fighting against the forces, but like, I don't want to waste any Parthia uses. Because, like, Parthia is a really good weapon. It's one of the three Regalia, after all, but... 
It does have durability, and if you use it willy-nilly now, you're gonna lose it by the end of the game, and I don't want that. Uh, also, uh, you might have noticed I am using the Wodeo. Uh, I believe its stats are kinda similar to uh, the Killing Edge. I don't know either stats off the top of my head, but I do know that the uh, Wodeo uh, or Wodao, God damn it! I really need to figure out what that is. Uh, the Wodao uh, is also a critical hit heavy weapon, which is why I've given it to Iris. Because, you know, she could use those. Also, here's Bantu in action. He's still not a very good Monoket, but hey, you know, we might as well have some dragon for this chapter. Might as well show the dragon off, because I don't do that really all that often. Man, it's a good thing we're ending this chapter after this turn, because, uh, like I said, the heroes are actually kind of tough. Uh, this would be really bad if they had to actually keep fighting. And that's just about as much as I can do, so let's end the chapter before somebody gets hurt. Well, me somebody, not them somebody. Yeah, don't need to tell me twice, Jig, and I noticed. By the power of this hat, I'll take on the entire army! I mean, in fairness, have you seen Iris' attack and defense? They're not stellar. Oh yeah, remember what I said about hat scenes and how they ruin everything? Oh my god, we're going to be killed by Arcania, we gotta get out of here now, or we'll be defeated. By the way, do you want to take off your hat? Quick question, while we're all fleeing for our lives, but like, how's that hat working out for you? You want to take it off? Yeah, probably.